So in short, an inventive story, fantastic CG animation, wonderful characters, top-notch voice acting, and I didn't mention it, but the OST is great as well. What more could you possibly want from this show? Why does this have less than a 7 on Mal? Start it. Started from the bottom, now we here. Started from the bottom, now my whole team here. Nigga, started from the bottom, now we here. Started from the bottom, now the whole team fucking here. Finally did it guys. After 11 long weeks, we've crawled our way out of that 6.9 and reached the glorious 8.0 plus. This is honestly like seeing one of my children growing up. I'm very proud and very happy that we have managed to get this show up to the level it deserves. I hope that it continues going even higher. Back a few weeks ago, my, my initial prediction for where it'll end up by the end is a an 8.2 but at this rate i could see it maybe even going a little bit higher which is excellent and i'm very happy about this completely deserved and hopefully in the future people will see that score and realize whoa this is actually a really good show i should check this out hello everybody i am phenom sage and welcome back to another hoski no kuni land of the lustrous episode review today we're going to be talking about episode 11 secrets and before I get into this episode review, I just want to quickly apologize for two things. One, I'm sorry this review is going up a bit later than it usually goes up. I had to wake up very early this morning in order to go see The Last Jedi. It was one of the few showings available, so I took that chance. And because of it, I'm very tired. Uh, so hopefully you forgive me if I sound a bit tired or more exhausted than usual. And also I want to apologize. No reaction this week. Uh, just because, like I said, I was busy this morning, couldn't find the time to react to this episode. It, it didn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. There wasn't really anything in this episode that I considered reaction-worthy. And that leads me into my thoughts on the episode as a whole. It was, it was a lot different than I expected it going into this episode after the just insane climactic shit that we got last episode. It was, it was surprising where this episode took the tone and the pace of the series that we've gotten so far. Uh, I'm not going to say it was bad. I would say, however, that I think this might be the weakest episode out of the series for me personally. And like I said, that's I, I don't want to have to keep playing defense here. Like, it was a great episode still. It's just when I compare it to all of the greatness that we've gotten previously, there wasn't really a lot going on in this episode. It was it was a lot slower. I saw some initial promises of like secrets and suspicious behavior and all this stuff. We did get that, but I feel like we never really got any answers that I thought we were going to get in this episode. In fact, I don't really think we got anything explained this episode. All it did was raise more questions. But there was a lot to love about this episode, and some nitpicks, and some complaints that I will mention later on in the video. But for now, let's just get into this. The biggest takeaway that you're you're supposed to get from this episode is clearly Sensei, Sensei's connection with Shiro and what what is going on here. What is their connection? What is their history? And does Sensei have some kind of ulterior motive behind this entire school and raising all of these gems? And I don't think it's that black and white. I don't think that after this episode, I feel like a lot of people will straight up say, oh no, Sensei is suspicious. He's he's a bad guy. He's doing something sketchy. I'm not on that side of the camp just yet. I, I do think there's something more to what's going on with him. And I do think that there might be some ulterior motives behind what Sensei is doing. But I don't really think I could call him a bad guy. I think it's a lot more complex than that, and I don't really have any concrete information or evidence to support that. It's just a gut feeling of mine. I just don't see Sensei being that kind of character. And I do believe that there are hints throughout the episode that 
are supposed to convey that there is more to this than just Sensei is evil or Sensei is a good guy. There are a lot of little moments sprinkled throughout the episode that convey that there is a mixture of things happening and it's very intricate. I think this is showcased two major times during this episode. I would say one is when Foes is initially questioning Sensei about Shiro and his connection to Shiro. Sensei is definitely hiding his connection and his past to this creature, but at the same time when he is questioned about it, he's not surprised, he's not taken aback, he's not trying to hide anything, he's not expressing any fright of foes asking these questions, he's kind of just like, no. He says it very passively and he says it very calmly, which makes me believe that he does, he is hiding things, but that the intention behind hiding these things isn't necessarily a negative one. I believe that this is even further showcased during the death or the passing of Shiro in Sensei's arms, a very beautiful and tragic scene just conveying so much melancholy and sadness. The way that this scene is presented makes you care about Shiro and its connection to Sensei. So the overall impression I got after the end of the episode is that there is something more going on here, but I don't really think that Sensei means any harm by anything he's doing. It also begs the question why the Lunarians sent Shiro to this school in the first place. Did they expect it to claw up all the gems, collect all its pieces, and then bring it back to them? Like, why would they do this? Maybe it's even that the Lunarians themselves have some kind of connection with Sensei, and they're delivering this animal that he once had a connection with? A few people have brought this up before, but any time that we've seen the Lunarians interacting with Sensei, they're bowing to him and they're clawing at his robes. I speculated on this way back thinking that there might be something more going on here, and it seems like there is. I just wonder how far this connection goes. I did enjoy that we learned that the rest of the gyms have already been aware of the fact that Sensei is hiding this, and that they've chosen to believe in him anyways no matter what he's hiding, because one, this shows that the gyms are not ignorant, they are very aware of what's going on because it's been so long it would make sense that they've learned these things before. Two, it makes sense that Foes doesn't know this and was never aware of this fact because she is the youngest of the group and that it was only a matter of time before she learned these things. And three, because I sympathize with the gyms and their mindset, their thought process, I am in the exact same camp. I'm going to choose to believe in Sensei no matter what he's hiding. A complaint I brought up last episode that seems to have continued into this episode is that Foes doesn't seem to be in this depressed, more subdued state that she was back in episode 9 after the events of Antarcticite's death, taking the winter shift alone. I said last episode that Foes seemed to be a lot more cheerful and like her old self in that episode than she was before, and that it seemed kind of like a sudden shift in her character that didn't feel warranted, but I did get a few comments that explained this change and I think it makes sense to me and I think that overall if you were to binge this series and go from episode 8 to episode 9 to episode 10 I don't think it would feel nearly as jarring as it did waiting a week from depressed foes in episode 9 to episode 10 where she is a little bit more spunky and sarcastic etc etc. Looking back this does seem like a natural state for her character to be in at the moment, surrounded by all of these gyms, surrounded by her friends, surrounded by Sensei. I think it makes sense that she would lighten up a bit, and we even saw that in episode 9, to a degree, when she was surrounded by all the gyms, there was a part of her that lightened up, was making jokes again, and seemed like her old self. So, looking back, I don't think that this change in her character is very much of a change at all, and I think it makes sense, looking back, I can I can justify Foz's character acting this way in this situation, as opposed to before when I said, uh, this kind of feels like just an excuse to make Foz sarcastic again, what about all that meaningful character development you had before? I don't think that betrays that character development, I think this is the way that Foz would behave and act around all of her friends. It's made evident that Foz hasn't changed from her more solemn and subdued self 
in episode 9, when she starts questioning Sensei, his connection to the Lunarians, and taking it upon herself to learn the truth about these things. And there's a nice line with Foes where Sensei asks her how working with Bort was and how it went, and the changes are made evident in this line because past Foes, the old Foes, sarcastic Foes, would have made jokes and poked fun at Bort, talking about how mean and strict she is, but with no hesitation, the Foes right now immediately acknowledges Bort's strength and her quick-mindedness. Speaking of Foes, as I said earlier in the episode, Foes is out for answers. She's not getting them from Sensei. Sensei. Sensei's mouth is closed. He's not going to reveal any of this information to her. So she comes to the conclusion that the only way she's going to get answers is by asking the Lunarians themselves. And that is a crazy twist. I have no idea how she's going to approach this situation. Uh, we see her waiting by the hill, waiting for the Lunarians to show up again. Is she just going to ask them about these things, hope that they don't try and attack her? Is she going to let herself get caught so that she can get the answers by going back with them? What is going on here? With Foz's alloy, it almost makes me wonder if they broke Foz into pieces, if she would just be able to put herself back together with the alloy. Since the alloy isn't really a metal that can be broken, that feels like that could be crucial to being captured by the Lunarians and still making it out in one piece. I think it's interesting to think about what kind of questions foes would ask the Lunarians too. We have to keep in mind that this is after foes has lost her memories about the undersea explanations that she got from Ruler back in episode 4 when we learned about all of the all of the information about the world, about the Admirabilis, the Gyms, and the Lunarians, and how supposedly the Lunarians' true goal is to bring these three pieces of humanity back together. We have to assume that Foz doesn't remember this at all, so she would likely ask what the Lunarians are after in the first place. She might also ask what their connection to Sensei is, and maybe even what humans are. I seriously doubt that we can fit all of these important revelations and plot arcs into this one final episode, so we just have to pray to the anime gods that Orange delivers that second season sometime soon. Otherwise, you know, we're going into that manga hype train, I know, but it would be amazing to get a second season, and soon, considering I think there is enough material in the manga to adapt a second season already. Probably the next biggest source of information and revelation that we got in this episode it could also be considered my biggest complaint with this episode. We learn about a character called Podparacha, I think that's how you pronounce that, a member of the group who was the second strongest after Bort, and as old as Yellow, who fought alongside Rutil, but from my understanding, since they were born with holes inside of them, they're in a coma-like state right now because Rutil doesn't have the materials needed to form the complete body. Now my question is, if these holes were formed when she was born, and yet she fought alongside Rutil and everybody seems to know her in the group, how did these holes form again? Do they just slowly degrade over time? Were they lost to an enemy encounter? This doesn't seem like a battle wound, this seems like a birth defect. So I'm going to assume that this is because those holes slowly form over time no matter how many times you put that material inside of her. Either way, I really like this design for Podparacha, but my complaint with her character more so comes from the fact that we have never heard of her before. She's made out to be like a regular that we should have heard about because of her connection with Rutil, and Foz seems to know her as well. So to bring her up at this random of a time just seems really off and weird to me. You could argue argue that they did that with Antarcticite as well, but I feel like with Antarcticite, it was a lot more relevant and made a lot more sense to bring him up at that time because it was the winter, he was just forming then, and overall none of the gyms really have a connection with him because of the fact that he does the winter shift alone, which means he really hasn't had much of a connection or interaction with the rest of the group. Whereas the rest of the group definitely know who Podparacha is, and there wasn't really any reason to bring this up other than the fact of, oh okay, let's progress the story. So yeah, that just really rubbed me the wrong way, otherwise Podparacha seems like a really cool character, at least in design. I 
love her hair, the way that it completely fills the box that she's in, and the fact that they focus on her and her awakening at the end of this episode as the cliffhanger, it makes me wonder what kind of role that she will have in this final episode. And finally, the final piece of information that we got, and the final revelation, I would say, in this episode, the one that easily gave me the biggest reaction, if I did a reaction video, that would you would have seen the biggest reaction out of me, is apparently Alexandra turns into this alter ego or this alter form whenever she sees Lunarians. I don't know why, but when I saw that the first time, I was like, oh my god, what is this? What is going on here? I wonder if there's any kind of geological reason for that happening. Knowing Ichikawa's research and her knowledge about these things, I would guess there probably is some kind of reasoning for why Alexandrite turns into that. But even if there isn't, it's just a cool thing, so... And one final note I'd like to make about the episode before we end this here. Like I said, this was a very different kind of episode, but I did enjoy how comedic and funny it was. I would say that this is probably the funniest episode that we've gotten in the series so far. And genuinely funny too, not just canned humor or just jokes that fall flat, like... All the humor in this series has been excellent, and this episode is no exception. Also, was it just me, or were all the gyms in this episode just way cuter than they usually are? Not to say that they aren't usually cute, but like, just in this episode, it feels like because of this comedy focus, they were just put in really cute situations. Obsidian, Zircon, and Yellow all stood out to me for that. I, I just thought they were the cutest things, and honestly, it's going to make composing my best gyms list even harder than it already was. I feel like I'm gonna have to make it top 10 instead of top 5. Oh, I forgot to mention Bort in that list too. Bort was way cuter than she's ever been. Also, I just have to say that I love that Foz's gold mannequin was modeled after Cinnabar. I just thought that was the most hilarious thing. Last episode, I was like, what the hell? Gold Cinnabar? What's going on here? But it was just Foz using her alloy to create a Cinnabar lookalike. And like I said, just a really funny episode overall. I would call it still a great episode, even though I said this was the weakest episode of the series so far. It was still great. We got a very beautiful moment with Shiro and Sensei. We had lots of comedy, funny moments. We have a new resolve from Foz. I definitely wouldn't call this a weak episode by any means. It's still a very strong episode. And I am so looking forward to seeing how they end all of this next episode in the finale episode 12. I believe it was called New Work. I have no idea what that could imply, but it's very interesting and I'm just really looking forward to it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you for the support on these host key reviews. I, it means a ton to me. I love reading your guys' comments, replying to them. I love all of your support in terms of likes and giving me feedback. It, it's just the best. I love you guys. Stay tuned sometime this week. I would say probably either Monday or Tuesday for a video that I'm doing where I'll be discussing and covering what shows I'm interested in covering and reviewing next season. I'll just be going through Mal and looking through shows. Uh, it's gonna be a fun time. You guys can go in the comments and tell me any shows that you'd want me to look at to consider covering as well. So that's gonna be a fun time. Look forward to that. And of course, as always, have a great day.